Hey everyone, um, this is Austin here. For those of you that are just new to my channel, I'm a medical student and I'm sharing valuable insight and tips to help all of you get accepted into medical school and to excel in medical school once you get there. So today's video will be about how to study for the MCAT more efficiently and how to improve your score substantially. So I'm going to be walking through step by step different methods and what I think is the best way to improve your score on the MCAT and from what I've been hearing and what I've been seeing from other people, this is a very effective way of studying and it's also the way that many medical students study. So if you're trying to go into medical school, this would be great exposure to how to use this system called Anki and I'll be showing you step by step with screenshots of how to do that. Now before we get started, I do want to say I recognize that this video is coming at quite a pressing time for not just our country but the whole world due to coronavirus outbreak. Um, my prayers are going out for all the families that have been affected. However, I do believe that together we can all conquer this and we can continue to advocate for social distancing and especially us who are going to be in the medical profession or already in the medical profession, how we can continue to advocate for others and promote positivity during this time. So that being said, let's get started with this video. Wash your hands, stay safe, and let's do this. So you're probably already aware of this by now, but being a pre-med is just not easy. You have extracurricular activities, research commitments, maintaining high grades in your courses, studying for the MCAT, and all this you're trying to maintain a good social life, getting good sleep, and maintaining your sanity. So clearly, there's a lot on your plate. But what I think many people, including myself, can agree on is that the key is to become more efficient. If you want to hear about more research, extracurriculars, and how to be accepted into medical school, I did do a video on that, and I'll link it up here. I think you'll find that very helpful. But today, I want to talk about how to use a software called Anki and walk you through that step-by-step -step where you'll become more efficient, increase retention time, and streamline the entire process of studying for the MCAT, which will generally, I think, improve your scores substantially. So first off, what is Anki? So this is something I wish I discovered sooner in my life, but I discovered it more as I was working in medical school. It's basically an online flashcard system that helps you learn and memorize information. So when you're doing something like studying for the MCAT where there's just a plethora of information you need to know for your exam, this system makes it so easy to understand all the concepts and really apply it to improving your score. So basically what it is, is an algorithm where you'll receive different types of flashcards and you'll space them out in intervals according to how well you do. So for instance, one flashcard you'll see in the first day. And if you get it right, you can say that you got it good and I'll space that out to three days. And after three days, it'll be five days, seven days, and so on. So basically every day you're doing these reviews to continually see the information and retain it in your brain. And it tells you exactly how many reviews you need to do per day and what you need to do each time. So if you continue to follow this algorithm and trust it, you will improve your retention time, you'll improve your memory, and you'll be working more efficiently than just reading out of a book. Because when you're answering the flashcards, it's actually doing a higher level learning than just reading and highlighting. That's something we call first order learning. But when you're actually answering a flashcard and trying to remember the information and engaging with the material, you're strengthening that connection in your brain, and that's going to be a more efficient way of studying than just doing traditional reading and highlighting. Alright, so I think it'll make a lot more sense once you see it and I walk through it step by step. So first things first, you're going to have to download the Anki program. It's here at apps.ankiweb.net. I'll throw a link for that in the description. But here it explains a little more about what I mentioned before, how the program works. And if you have Windows, you can download it here. And there's also a Mac feature over here. Uh, they also have an app that you can use on your phone. I'll talk about that more at the end. But I think that's an easy way to continue studying on the go and to stay more efficient. So what's nice about these flashcards is that you actually don't have to make any yourself because there's a strong Reddit community that makes all pre-made flashcards for multiple exams such as the USMLE Step 1, they do it for law exams, languages, and even the MCAT. So based on different study resources, there will be pre-made decks that already have all the flashcards and information you need to know to do well on your MCAT. So once you download Anki here, you're going to have to download that pre-made deck and again, I'll throw that in the description, but here is Rebop Bebop's MCAT Guide and Anki Cards. 
So he scored 518, and that's a very impressive score. And basically just using these flashcards to retain that information in his brain and to learn all the material necessary. So he used the Kaplan 7-book set that I did mention in my video about how to get accepted into medical school. So if you want to hear more about that, you can go there and I talk about that more. But pretty much the Kaplan set has seven books for all the seven subjects that are going to be tested on the MCAT. And this person created the Anki cards that correspond to each of those books and broke it down by chapter as well. So here you'll see the Anki card. So if you go ahead and click that link, it'll take you to a Google Drive. And you can download the MCAT Anki folder with all the information inside. Alright, so if you open up the MCAT Anki folder here, you'll see all of the chapters and the sections I mentioned earlier. So I'll walk you through this more as we go on. I already have this downloaded as well as Anki, so once you get that into your computer, I'll let you know what to do next. Alright, so once you open Anki for the first time, you should get a screen that sort of looks like this. So first thing we're going to do is adjust some of the options and I'll explain to you what each of these mean. So if you click on the wrench kind of right here, you can go to options and first thing we're going to do is you're going to change your steps and minutes to 10 and 1440. I believe the default is 1 and 10. So let me just quickly explain what this means. So when you're learning a card for the first time, there are three options that you can have. So it's either again, meaning that you got the card wrong, so you'll see it again. You can say good, meaning you got it right, and that'll space the card out. Or you can also use the option easy, which will space the card out in a bigger interval. So as I mentioned before, the interval here for graduating a card is one day. So when you get it good, you'll see it again in one day. However, if you think you know the card cold and you want to say easy, you won't see that card again for four days. But you have to be really careful with this because when you do that to a card, that will increase its interval for its entire span of that card so what that means is you'll see it in four days and then you might see it in like eight days then 12 days instead of the regular interval which is one you'll see like one day then it'll go to like three and then five so unless you know a card really really well i would recommend just sticking with the good option and not using easy because it can space the card out so far that you're not really remembering the card as well so the good interval is really what the algorithm is designed for and I think that if you continue to click good with each of your cards, that will be the best way to maximize your retention. So going back to the steps in minutes, what this means when it's 10 is that when you get a card wrong, you'll see it again in 10 minutes instead of 1 minute because I found that when you see a card again in 1 minute, you kind of still remember doing that card 60 seconds ago so it's not really testing your memory but if you do it in 10 minutes, that's a good amount of time to remember the card. And then 1440 means that's a number of minutes in one day. So when you get it right, you'll see it again in one day, and then it will graduate to the another day interval. So this just makes sure that you know the card really well before you send it off into the graduated phase. So when a card is being learned, it's in the learning phase. So you can get it wrong as many times you want, and that won't affect anything. So you can keep pressing again until you know it really well, but once it graduates, if you get it wrong later on, then you're going to go to relearning the card. And that's something that will re-shrink the interval. So if the original interval is like one day, three days, and five days, and you graduate the card and you get it wrong on, let's say, the fifth day, you'll have to press again, and now you're relearning the card. So it'll come back to a one-day interval. But instead of going to like a three-day and a five-day interval, the interval is going to be shortened because that means you're having trouble memorizing this card. So the algorithm will now make that card, for example, one day, then two days, then four days. So the interval is going to be shorter for that card. So be careful with doing graduating cards too early and pressing again too often to relearn the card because you can end up in a phase where you're doing a ton of reviews every day because your cards are having too short of an interval. So the sweet spot you'll have to find as you use the app, but what I recommend is doing 10 and 1440 for the steps up here in minutes. You can keep all of these the same. You don't have to change anything for these except for new cards per day. Instead of doing 20 new cards, I would say do as 99999 because you don't want to limit the amount of cards you want to do per day you want to do the maximum amount and each day you can adjust how many cards you want to study in the next tab you have reviews so these are the cards that will come back each day that you'll have assigned to review before you learn any new cards so again with the maximum reviews per day you want to do all your reviews not just 200 so change this to 99999 the max amount and then you want to change your maximum interval down here so as I mentioned before, as you use this app to study for the MCAT, you're going to be spacing cards out very, very far. Eventually, 
for me, like I have some carbs I don't see for five months or six months, but the maximum interval basically caps that to a certain range. So the number of days I would say is good would be about 180 days. So this is about five months because there's 30 days in a month times five is 180. And so what I found is that when cards start getting spaced out six or seven months, it gets really hard to retain that information because you're only seeing this card now once or twice a year. But I think five months is a good ground. So when you build up that card from one days, three days, five days, all the way up to five months, you'll know it so well that it'll be like second nature. And that's what's worked for me. And you can feel free to adjust that as you use the app and as you study and learn how what works for you. You don't need to change anything here in lapses except for the leech action. So what it's saying here is that when you get a card wrong, so when you're relearning a card, this is what the lapse feature is. You don't want the latch, the card to get suspended after. You want it to be tagged. So suspending a card means you're basically just canceling it. So you're not going to see it anymore. It will suspend it so that you won't uh, see it when you're studying. But just because you get a card wrong eight times, which is the leech threshold, you don't want to just suspend that card because you're going to want to know that for your MCAT. So instead, you'll just tag it. So they'll have like a flag on there so you'll know that, okay, I seem to be getting this concept wrong repeatedly. But you'll still see the card because obviously you want to retain that information for when you take your MCAT. General, this is fine. You don't need to do anything for this. And then you shouldn't need to do anything in here either. So you can press OK and you're good to go. Alright, so now I'm going to show you what it looks like and I'll explain everything as I go. So once you've downloaded the Reddit Anki Pre-Made Kaplan deck that we mentioned before, you can import that in. So first thing we're going to do is go to File and Import. So let's say I just finished learning Biochem Chapter 1. So this is when I'll import this deck into my Anki. So once I open that up, it'll come with all the information here, you can press close and then it'll come right here. So since we changed the setting to doing as many new cards as possible, all the cards in this deck, which is 72, will come right here. So we can quickly study these cards and I'll show you what it looks like as you go forward. So you press here, you click study now, and you have a card like this. What is an amino acid? So if you press space or press show answer here, it'll tell you what the answer is. So you're gonna answer this in your head or say it out loud, and we know what amino acid is, you press space, and you see a molecule that contains an amino group and a carboxyl group. So now, like I mentioned earlier, you have three options. You can either say again, meaning that you got it wrong, you'll see it again in 10 minutes. Then if you get it right later on, you can press good, meaning now I'll see it in one day. Like I said earlier, the easy option will space it out by four days, but we want to be careful about using that one. So I'm just going to go with good. So naturally, the system will already have good as space bar. So if I press space bar, this card is good. And now you can see I only have 71 cards left since I just finished that one. Now we have a side chain that's part of the amino acid. And we can see that it's the amino acid that defines, specifies the various amino acids. Again, we get it good, we can move on. Proteogenic amino acids, those are like the 20 amino acids in the human body. We have here the 20 alpha amino acids encoded by the human genetic code. Shows a nice picture diagram here. We're good on that. So, and so forth, we can keep moving on. The exception of glycine, all amino acids are chiral. So we remember learning that. Get that good, we can space it on. And so, so on and so forth. We go back to our decks here, and now we have 68 new cards left. All right, so that's pretty much the basics of Anki and the way the Kaplan deck is formatted since each chapter and section are their own deck. When you want to do the next one, you can just go back to file and import the next one and it'll be its own thing and you'll do the same as I mentioned before. So with chapter two, you can open that up here, click close and you can see that there's now 60 cards to do here on chapter two. And so right now you see there's nothing due because we just started learning new cards which are blue here. Tomorrow, if I open up my Anki or when you do it, you'll see some green cards that come as due, and that's because those are the ones you did yesterday that are now at a one day interval. So it might seem like you're doing a lot, but I'm telling you that when you engage in the material and with these flashcards, you're actually learning it more efficiently and better than just reading out of a book. The thing that makes Anki difficult for a lot of students is that you have to actually do it every single day because you're going to have reviews due every day. But if you wake up early or you find a time in the day where you can just get through all the reviews, this will basically streamline all the studying that you do and it will be way more efficient than reading or doing any of the Kaplan book stuff over and over and over again. 
you know when people study 10 hours a day that's a lot different than studying six hours extremely efficiently and I think that Anki allows you to do this so last thing I want to mention was you might notice that I have a lot of different statistics here or charts down here because these are just add-ons that I use and a lot of them are more applicable to what I'm doing Anki for for medical school but if you want to look into this more there are a lot of other videos on YouTube and also if you go on tools here click add-ons you can see different add-ons that I'm using for what you're doing for the MCAT you really don't need any of these add-ons but if you really want to get something like a night mode to have less strain on your eyes or have more overview stats that I have you can just go and get add-ons and paste the code that you can get from Google so I'll show you really easily so if you want to do Anki add-on overview stats like this it'll come up right away you just click on the link here from the Anki web and they will have a code down here you just copy and paste this code into your Anki right here and then you'll have it and once you reset your Anki that add-on will be there so if you have any other questions about anything related to Anki or how to be more efficient studying for the MCAT just feel free to drop that in the comments all right guys, thanks for tuning in. That's gonna mostly conclude our video for today. I know that Anki can be a system that has a steep learning curve. It can be hard to understand how it works right away. I did my best to try to explain it in the simplest way possible, but I do know that there are other YouTubers out there such as the Anking Med where I learned a lot of what I know about Anki from there. So I'll definitely link his channel in my description as well. So you can check that out if you wanna learn more about the algorithm. But I think with the resources that we currently have provided in this video from Reddit, and how to use Anki. I think this is all that you really need to truly master the materials on the MCAT. So the number one rule with Anki is that you just have to do your reviews every single day and I know that things come up so if you can't do a review a certain day it'll actually just backload and stack up for the next day so you just end up doing double the following day but I think it'll be a good habit to try to just get it done each day it doesn't take more than an hour or two hours if you do it efficiently and you stay focused so pretty much what I would recommend is that when you're starting each day you wake up and you do the reviews if you can get those done first and then when you're learning your MCAT material whichever chapter and section you're on you read the Kaplan books you learn as much as you can from the material and then after that, you reinforce what you've just learned and read by doing the Anki flashcards. And once you unlock those flashcards or add or import that deck into your Anki, you'll see those cards on a consistent interval. So once you unlock those cards, you never have to go back and look at the Kaplan book unless there's a concept that you still aren't fully understanding. Because if you're just doing the flashcards, you're pretty much just repeating what you've just read and learned over time. And as that interval spaces out, one day, three days, five days, you're not going to see it as often, but you'll actually learn it and memorize it and know it very well. Overall, I personally wish that I had studied and figured out how to use Anki a lot sooner because I think it is the most effective and efficient way to study. And I know it might not be for everyone, but I hope that for those of you that like Anki and it works for you, that you can benefit as much as I did from using the software. If you have any questions about it at all, just feel free to drop a comment. I'm happy to help. I thank you guys all for tuning in. I hope that that can be helpful for all of you that are studying for the MCAT and can really help you improve your scores and get accepted into medical school. All right, so that's all that I have for today. Everything that we talked about, I'll put a link for all of that in the description. Again, if you have any questions at all, just feel free to comment. And if you're liking the videos that you're getting so far, feel free to subscribe to my channel. I'll continue to bring out videos when I can to just help pre-meds, med students, and people that want to be in the medical profession. So thanks again for tuning in. Stay safe again during this time. Wash your hands, and I wish you all the best.